Hi and welcome back. It's another video. So today I wanted to uh, touch briefly on fluoride. What it is and why it's in our water. I'll also tell you about where fluoride can naturally be found. So fluoride is a naturally occurring mineral that is found out in nature. It is um, found in uh, water, natural water, uh, soil, uh, different types of rock, uh, plants. So those are some of the natural resources that you would find uh, trace amounts of fluoride in. Now fluoride also is naturally occurring in our teeth and in our bones. So when I discuss about, um, and I may have touched on this in one of my previous videos about uh, water distillation and that one of the, um, what I would refer to as an impurity in my water is fluoride. I don't want that in my water because I don't want to ingest it. Um, I want to remove it. So if it's naturally occurring in uh, so many different aspects of our life, why do we need any more of it? So we already know that fluoride is found in toothpaste, it's found in dental treatments that you can um, accept or decline at your dentist office, as well as some mouthwashes and um, oral rinses will contain fluoride. So it's up to you to do your research and you can make up your own mind about what it is that you want to use, whether you would prefer a um, dental a hygiene product that does or does not contain um, fluoride. So for me personally, I choose not to use anything that contains fluoride. So for, I would say, at least maybe 15 to 20 years, I have uh, not used a toothpaste that has fluoride in it. I don't buy mouthwash very often, but if I do, it's uh, usually by a brand, um, I think it's Tom's. Tom's also makes a uh, fluoride-free toothpaste as well as fluoride-free um, mouthwash. Burt's Bees also um, manufactures um, a fluoride-free toothpaste. Now I will state this, um, if you decide that you would like to try a fluoride-free toothpaste, make certain that you do read the front of the package as well as turn it over to make sure that it does not contain fluoride if that's what you're trying to avoid because uh, both of those companies still provide toothpaste with fluoride in it. So just to be mindful of that. Um, you know, I'm 52 years old. I have all 32 teeth and no cavities. And that's no great thanks to, to fluoride. <laughs> fluoride had nothing to do with the fact that I have all of my teeth and they're all in great health. I also um, have my own um, very good, thorough uh, dental hygiene plan of my own that I utilize daily. So I have done a very good job of taking care of my own teeth. But I know that a lot of other people can't, whether it's time or money or they're just tired and they, they get up and go to bed and they don't brush their teeth. Um, I understand that, but you really, other than your baby teeth, you really only have that one set of teeth. So you wanna to try to take the best care of them that you can. Um, so getting back to fluoride and having it um, added to our water. So not all cities, and municipalities put fluoride in the city water. Some do and some don't, but I would say um, there's a very large percentage of um, cities that do add it to city water. 
uh, you I think you can look that up uh, in your own town if it, it is a bit of a concern to you that fluoride has been added to the water um, you can find that out and your city is supposed to be forthcoming with that information that's not something that should be hidden or a mystery to you as a um, resident and consumer of of the water that's coming into your home um, as well as your place of business where you might work uh, anywhere that you can you know access water you want to make sure that that water is um, good quality so water that is uh, municipal water or city water is collected and it's collected from uh, large lakes um, large wells uh, reservoirs those will contain water that has been obviously out in nature and so it it needs to be treated it's just been exposed to the environment and then of course we wonderful humans uh, think we know everything and we just dump whatever it is that we think is just <laughs> you know just chuck it chuck it in a, in a body of water not thinking long term about where that water is going to end up someday so basically a water treatment facility who provides city and municipal water is going to treat that water okay well what do they treat it with they consider um, chlorine to be a treatment and chloridated water or chlorinated water excuse me is part of the treatment process and chlorine has its own function in water it will stabilize the water enough to um, make it usable for you when it's coming into your home now fluoride if your city or a city is adding fluoride that's just what it is it's an additive it is not part of the treatment process for city water and the water that you are utilizing in your home. It's an additive. So why are they adding it? What benefit does it have on us um, to be washing our bodies with this water? I mean, the your skin is your largest organ and is extremely exposed to um, everything. It's exposed to, you know, the air we breathe and then you're bathing in this water. Um, it's absorbing everything. It's absorbing that chlorine that's treated the water along with whatever else they have used to treat your city water. And then to add fluoride to it, you know, why, why is that? I mean, is the city, cities in, in the United States, and, and like I said before, not all cities uh, fluoridate their water, not all of them, but a great population of um, cities in, in, in our country, in the United States, do. Why is my city so damn concerned about the overall health of my teeth? Why does my city care if I have a cavity? Why does my city care if my teeth are decaying and falling out of my mouth? That's not my city's problem, that's my problem. And it's up to me to take care of that. So fluoride is, like I said, it's an additive, but it does have some health implications long term for people even just um, an overexposure to fluoride can cause fluorosis of, of your teeth oops I got <laughs> I've got a kitty this is onyx um, it can cause it uh, fluorosis of the teeth which is uh, it's like a like these lines, these white lines that will appear vertically up and down on the teeth and it weakens them over time and then you're going to end up losing them, you know, just from having too much fluoride. And then there's another condition called uh, skeletal fluorosis, which is 
basically it's along the same lines as just uh, fluorosis and that is uh, in your bones where if you have had um, too much fluoride uh, ingested in, in terms of drink um, or it's just been absorbed somehow, that can cause a weakening of your bones and your bone structure. And from what I have read, it is exceptionally painful. And I don't really know that there's a whole lot that anyone can do about that condition. So, um, you know, fluoride comes with its own fair share of problems. And I just don't feel that uh, it should be added to your water. You should have some say in whether or not fluoride is added to the water that you use to cook your food. Um, you're washing your clothes in it, you're bathing in it, you're, you're uh, watering your plants with it, and although you might not think that that's a problem, um, it, it could very well be. And, and I, I really have no use for fluoride at all and especially having it added to the water that I bathe in. I'm not thrilled with that. And, you know, looking at toothpaste and mouthwash and oral rinses and these um, fluoride treatments, the mouth is very porous. So when you have these products in your mouth, even though it may only just be momentarily, trust me, your body is still absorbing those. And then where do they go? from there. You know, some of it goes down to your stomach. Um, if you're drinking your water that's coming out of the tap, you're spitting out the rinse, the mouthwash, the treatment, the toothpaste, all of that's going down the drain. And that's fine, but you've already been exposed to it. It's already been in your body. And fluoride has been connected to um, neurological issues. It is a neurotoxin and um, studies have been uh, proven to show that fluoride can affect the IQ of young children who are still developing um, their brain. Um, it has also led to, um, especially when you uh, grow older and you uh, go into your, <laughs> I have someone on the move here, uh, into your elder years dealing with uh, Alzheimer's and or um, dementia you know that's that's also uh, a link there's been a link to fluoride as well as aluminum and that's another subject <laughs> I'm not gonna get into today but aluminum comes with its own issues but fluoride uh, can exacerbate things like dementia and Alzheimer's uh, can cause a lot of cognitive and uh, memory issues. If you have ADHD or ADD, um, it can also uh, aggravate those as well. So there's a, a host of uh, problems associated with fluoride and there's just too many, for me, there's too many question marks surrounding fluoride and how it's being used today and that I, I don't really want any part of it. And I do everything that I can to minimize my exposure to it. So, I mean, if you wanted to, you can go on the internet and just look up um, countries uh, who fluoridate their water. And it, it'll come up with countries that have actually stopped um, adding fluoride to their municipal water supply because they've already discovered that, hey, this, this, this item that we're adding, this additive has problems and they've made too much of a connection between fluoride and this health problem, fluoride and that health problem. So it's really up to you to educate yourself on fluoride and um, what it is, how you are being exposed to it and what you can do about it on your own. You know, and just think about this for, for a moment. Food, the preparation of food in your home, you're using water from your tap to make something. You're boiling water and you're 
making pasta. You go to a friend's house, a friend has created this wonderful meal, a whole spread. Where did they get that water from? Did they turn their tap on? You know, did you ask them about that? Or are they using distilled water to boil pasta in? I always have enough of my distilled water sitting around that everything that I possibly can, I use that water in the preparation of my food. Packaged foods, think about the supermarket, think about every item that is in that store from the outer perimeter of the store to up and down the aisles, soups, gravies, sauces, anything that's been made with water, you turn it around, you look, oh, water, okay. Well, nobody's thinking about the, the quality of that water. Where did it come from? Where did it originate from? And how is that water treated? What has been added to it? So the exposure is unbelievable. And just because you're boiling water doesn't mean that the additives and the treatments that are being added to that water are boiled off. Steam distillation is really one of the only methods that will guarantee the removal of these things. And I, I realize that what I'm saying might be great. However, we are still being exposed to these things outside too, because it's in the air, it's in the soil. So all these wonderful fruits and vegetables and things that we like to eat, whether it's organic or conventional, guess what? It's growing in soil that's got fluoride in it. Where'd the fluoride come from? Well, it's naturally occurring, but guess what? These crops have to be watered. Where's that water coming from? And what's it been treated with? What's been added to it? I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing because you, it's like you, you can't get away from it. But in my own opinion, and I see somebody doing the over the shoulder sneak here. Um, it's up to you to do some, some research on it. I, I can do as much as I can um, to try to, to share this with you. But in my opinion, it's just nothing more than a, um, a calculated strategic um, action that's been employed to expose the greater population to um, fluoride exposure poisoning. That's, that's just my own, my own thoughts on it. And, um, you know, I'm sorry this video is as long as it is. I'm rather verbose. I have a lot to talk about. And, you know, I just, I just, I'm just here to help inform you. I'm not trying to be a pest or, you know, what's she on today? What's she talking about today? Yeah, I, I have tried to educate myself just to try to protect myself. I am only one person, but one person can share something that a lot of other people can learn about. And so that's about it for now, I think. Uh, just be cautious about what you're using, your products and things that you're bringing into your home. and. Um, you know, water's in uh, cosmetic, cosmetics too, as well as uh, lotions and creams and all kinds of stuff. So think about that one too. It's, just, it's everywhere, you can't get away from it. So find some time, do some research on fluoride and different countries that have stopped using fluoride in their, in their water system. So good for them, but United States, I think we've got a long way to go um, before anybody recognizes anything and it just to me it's just very sneaky and I don't like it so that's it for me for now and um, I appreciate your making it to the end of this video if you did and uh, be well and take care talk to you later